Welcome to Base Habits, episode number 72. Today we're gonna talk about playing bass in the Sex Pistols. The Sex Pistols were an English punk rock band that was formed in London in 1975. They were one of the most groundbreaking acts in the history of popular music, starting the punk movement in the UK and inspiring many later punk and alternative rock musicians. To put it simple, they are the grandfathers of punk. Through the type, the band only lasted for a couple of years before breaking up and recorded only one official album, never mind the bollocks. The album's raw energy and singer Johnny Rotten's sneering delivery and half singing are considered game-changing. The record is frequently listed as one of the greatest and most important rock albums of all time. Not bad for a band that was together for just two years, right? The mostly associated with punk icon Sid Vicious, the original 1975 lineup of the Sex Pistols was composed by lead singer Johnny Rotten, guitar player Steve Jones, Paul Cook on drums, and original bass player Glenn Matlock. There's not much live footage available, but on what we have, Matlock's P bass tone sounds absolutely massive. When it comes to raw energy, the Sex Pistols are hard to beat. Not only the bass guitar is really loud in these clips, but you can tell that it's the element that drives the song. Glenn is really tight and together with drummer Paul Cook forms a terrific rhythm section. If you're familiar with the song Pretty Vacant, you probably heard that Matlock's version is very different from what came out on the record. There's octave jumps at the beginning and a beautiful harmonization on the descending pattern, much more interesting than the basic bass line of the album version. Other songs too seem to have suffered the same destiny. On the demo version of Problems, there's much more movement compared to the album. Matlock left the band in late February 1977 after a number of demos were recorded, with contemporary fictional reports stating that he was thrown out because he liked the Beatles and according to Steve Jones, he was always washing his feet. In his biography though, Matlock stated that he left the band on his own terms and overall all former band members seemed to agree on the fact that there was a lot of tension between him and the rest of the band, which according to their manager Malcolm McLaren didn't like Glenn because he was too nice. Whatever the reason, with shows booked and an album to record, the band decided to hire Rotten's friend and self-appointed Ultimate Sex Pistols fan Sid Vicious. Vicious was previously drummer of two local punk bands, Suxi and the Banshees and the Flowers of Romance, and he was also credited for inventing the pogo dance. Well, thank you so much. Everyone in the band agreed Sid had a look, but musical skill was another matter. The first rehearsal in March 1977 did not go well. To put it simple, Sid couldn't play a note. Nevertheless, later that month the band was due to enter the studio to record their debut album. The official story says that Sid Vicious played on the tracks Bodies and God Save the Queen, but his performing skills were not considered fit to record a full album, so the band tried to convince Glenn Matlock to perform for the sessions. Matlock agreed on the condition that he was paid beforehand, and when payment was not received, he declined to attend. As a result, producer Chris Thomas asked guitarist Steve Jones to play bass, so they could at least begin working on the basic tracks. Jones' playing was so satisfactory that Thomas had him play bass for all the remaining songs recorded during the sessions, including overdubbing Sid's bass lines, which ended up being kept very low in the mix. The only track where original bass player Glenn Matlock performed was the single Anarchy in the UK, which had been recorded at an earlier time, and which of course is the only song in the album with an interesting bass line. Anarchy, 
Though Steve Jones did obviously a very good job recording pretty good tight bass tracks, he merely backed up the guitars and all the melodic drive that the bass brought to the songs in the early demos was completely gone. And on the whole album, there's not a single song with a significant bass line. I'm pretty sure most of the songs would have been way more interesting with Matlock on bass. Matlock was indeed a fan of the Beatles and among all the members of the Sex Pistols seems to be the one with the most musical ear. Glenn was a little bit more eclectic, kind of like the Beatles and, dare I say, ABBA. And he always was trying to show me these Beatle chords. Even Steve Jones later admitted that letting Matlock go was a mistake and that if they had not, the band might have kept going. On top, Matlock is credited as a co-writer on 10 of the 12 songs appearing on the album Nevermind the Bollocks and according to drummer Paul Cook, he was the main songwriting force behind the record. But back to Sid Vicious, was it really that bad? Sid's bass was always kept very low in the mix, so the only actual footage we have of him playing is when Steve Jones' amplifier fucked up for some reason. But we can still get an idea of what he was able to do. I'm an Looking at this footage, we can obviously tell that Sid had just started on bass and though he seemed to have a decent sense of tempo, he had no picking technique and he was probably just unable to get a consistent sound out of the instrument. So he wasn't physically able to perform in a record. Even Lemmy wrote in his autobiography that he tried to teach Sid some bass, but he was hopeless. After all, he got in the band mainly because of his persona and in the end, it's bass guitar, not rocket science. Sid was exceptionally good at creating the energy and spectacle that made the band what it was. The irony of all this is that despite being incapable of playing bass and having virtually never performed on a record, Sid Vicious is the most famous punk bass player in the world. Overall, the Sex Pistols are often portrayed like bad musicians, but except for Sid Vicious, it's far from true. After the group disbanded, Steve Jones released a fantastic record, Fire and Gasoline, and the Neurotic Outsiders album he recorded with John Taylor, Duff McKagan and Matt Sorum in 1996 is a masterpiece, go check them out. Johnny Rotten founded his band PIL and kept releasing albums at a steady pace. Glenn Matlock especially kept touring and making albums with different projects and recorded also with Iggy Pop, The Damned and many more, proving to be a skillful and well-rounded musician. This is it for today, thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, leave a comment, if you wanna go the extra mile and support this channel, please leave a super thank or buy one of our t-shirts, link in the description below.